How will this pandemic change your NASDAQ? Well, it's changed us quite a bit. We went from having 4% of our population working from home to 98% in a matter of uh, a week. And that was pretty remarkable. And uh, I think we have seen the markets work very efficiently and effectively. There's certainly been an impact on, I think, your lead in there to the IPO market. So happy to discuss that. But uh, we've been work working pretty well. Well, now, so let's talk about physical trading floors. Just touch on that topic and we can move on pretty quickly. But do you think yeah. the pandemic has underlined that we don't need them anymore? Yeah, I think if you look at the equities that have a pretty simple price action, uh, up or down, we have a long belief that the best outcome for investors is to do that in electronic format. I think these last two months, the data that we see now, how stocks open, the efficiently uh, trading throughout the day, and in particular the close, we've seen better performance in the electronic market. So I think we, we are of the strong belief that investors are best served with an open, transparent, and electronic marketplace, but that's, uh, that's our opinion. People like to come down to the trading floor for the big IPOs, the big song and yeah. dance, the dog and pony show. You've seen it a million times now, son. IPOs in a pipeline. Can you just give us some insight to what you're seeing just in terms of activity? Can we expect anything anytime soon? Yeah, great, great question. So we have performed at NASDAQ 15 IPOs uh, since the middle of March. And a lot of that has been in the healthcare space. Uh, I think the biggest challenge for an IPO is can they go out on do a roadshow and talk constantly about the upcoming quarters. Um, that's not as uh, important for a healthcare or a biotech IPO. So we have seen those go out and do very well. Uh, we are starting to see other companies though. Uh, you, you saw uh, this morning Warner Music filed for a very large IPO. They're going on the road today. And you will see more this week actually file uh, to start. Those. So we are seeing uh, some non-healthcare, non what we call SPAC IPOs uh, start to launch their roadshows. Many of them were very close to going in the March timeframe and then put their plans on hold. So these are deals that were in the works for a period of time. I will say though, we are starting to see new deals uh, pop up. And I think what we have here is we have a you know, November election, uh, but up from now until November, if the markets do hold, which uh, you know, again today, we're seeing some pretty impressive performance, <clears throat> uh, there's a chance we'll have a healthy IPO market that's multi-sector. Nelson, who are the investors here, especially as we talk about an increase in retail investors coming into stocks right now? Yeah, you, you are seeing it be more broad based. I think the initial rally, uh, we did not see a, a lot of long investors come into the marketplace. But I think as you have watched the indices continue to uh, go up, uh, you know, where the NASDAQ 100 is up almost 8% for the year. We have the NASDAQ composite up almost 3%. The biotech is up 13%. So we are starting to see some long investors come into the marketplace as they're seeing the ability to get uh, a bit more predictability in terms of what they're hearing companies say. So once we went through a obviously a pretty challenging earnings quarter where a lot of uh, companies had pulled guidance, we are now seeing them able to go out and have a bit more predictability in what they think may happen over the coming quarters and, and year. Nelson Griggs, one more question, if we could as well. One yeah. day you're going to get back to work. The pandemic is going to be over, and we're going to reinstitute IPOs. How are you going to compete with the New York Stock Exchange? What's the key distinction you have in 2021? Yeah, our, our key distinction, we, we obviously do very well. Last year, we won 78% of IPOs. We're on that same uh, track record this year. Um, I, I think our, our big story is life cycle uh, support. So we do a lot to help the companies, the right investors, uh, position their story. There's obviously, as you mentioned, a lot of different media and support around that. So we've been on quite a, quite a run the last handful of years in that 70% win rate. And it is a, a very holistic story we have. It uh, resonates very well with companies. Now, so before we round things out, quite clearly, looking at the rhetoric coming out of Washington and the policy too, there's got to be far more scrutiny of foreign companies listing on US exchanges. What is the role of foreign governments in those companies? Are we going to have the same auditing standards that US companies have to abide by? All things that just make a whole lot of sense. What's the stance of the Nasdaq on that situation at the moment? Yeah, I, I think you hit on the one in the middle there, the auditing standards. Um, and, and we obviously would like the U.S. to continue to be the, 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 the global focal point for growth companies to come and list. That said, there does need to be uh, transparency um, in terms of the reporting. So 
we were happy the SEC has uh, gotten together a, a group, a roundtable for a discussion of all of the ecosystem on July 9th. I think that was a very prudent move as we are seeing a lot more, as you said, rhetoric coming out of Washington. We need to be prepared as the ecosystem, meaning the exchanges, the banks, the auditors, as well as the SEC to make sure there's enough investor protection to invest in all companies that come to the U.S. So we're, we're supportive of the path we're all taking. And now, so are you looking to tighten your own rules before the government does it for you? We consistently look at our rules, and we, we have tightened the rules to some degree. We did last week. Um, it, it is a, it, it's a journey. You need to work again within the ecosystem. So those were done in, in concert with some feedback from other participants. Uh, but we're prepared to do when we have uh, discussions with, again, that the, the broad-based ecosystem is real important here because it's not just the exchanges, it's not just the, the, the bankers or the, uh, the accountants, it's really everybody coming together and saying what makes the most sense. But we, we certainly will do our, our role as a fiduciary uh, you know, exchange. We uh, have, have rules in place to think that are appropriate.